everybody welcome to the video it's wednesday june 23rd we'll be dealing with a split slate today like we did last wednesday which usually wasn't the case usually that starts on thursdays but once again we have a split slate today we have a six game early slate starting at around 12 35 p.m eastern the late main slate tonight i think starts like at 7 10 p.m eastern so kind of normal start times there but since the early slate starts so early today i am mainly focusing on the late main slate tonight but i do want to mention some of my favorite pitchers on the early slate today in case you are playing it but as far as the offense goes we're going to be focusing on the later slate tonight and if you do find this video helpful in any way possible please leave a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i do cover other sports as well if you're not totally into baseball I cover nascar and i cover nfl so pretty much videos each and every single day on the channel you can follow me over on social media if you want using the handles in the bottom hand corner of your screen and if you want to help support the channel over on patreon and get access to a lot of extra content link is down below in the description if you want to join the community but I think that's it for the plug, so without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as per usual, we'll start with the pitchers, then move on to the bats. And we'll start with Trevor Bauer here, $10,500. I know people are a little bit worried here with the spin rates going down and the MLB's cracking down on the sticky stuff. And yesterday was pretty funny. We, I think we had a couple of guys try to take their pants off, trying to prove to the umpires they don't have anything going on. Max Scherzer was the main culprit there. I think they had him check three times, which I think the... Philly's manager was just trying to get into his head, but he ended up getting ejected. Max Scherzer stared him down. It was it was kind of funny watching it. I'm sure Max Scherzer didn't think it was funny, but just as a fan watching it, I thought it was a little bit entertaining. Then I forget exactly who the Oakland A's pitchers was, but I remember he he actually pulled down his pants. It was kind of funny. But anyway, Trevor Bow here, ten thousand five hundred bucks. I'm sure he'll get checked by the Padres, but he's definitely the best pitcher to use on the late main slate tonight. And I realize he's a bit expensive, and the only other late slate pitcher I have on here is Robbie Ray, but you can spend it for pitching quite easily on that later slate tonight. I know it's a smaller slate, so there's, li there's like limited hitting options to choose from on like a 14 games like yesterday where you could pretty much play Garrett Cole and like a Zach Wheeler together or Lucas Giolito if you wanted to quite easily. But once again, we have some dirt cheap hitting options to talk about. So you should be able to double spend it for a pitcher once again. That's why I don't have any cheap pitchers listed here. Unless you're Herman Marquez, but he's in the early state tonight. But anyway, Trevor Bauer, if you're worried about the sticky stuff, I mean, last start, he still was fine without it versus Arizona. Ended up having, I think, 32 fantasy points. But his numbers have been pretty good this year. ERA 2.4, XFIP's a lot higher at 3.73, but the Sierra's around 3.5, 31% K rate. Giving up some power this season, close to a 180 ISO and some fly balls. But just raw points-wise, Trevor Bauer grades out pretty well. Now, it's a tough matchup versus the Padres. There's no denying that. Guys like Trent Grisham, Eric Hosmer, Tatis, Manny Machado, Tommy Pham. I mean, the list goes on. It's a very, very good offense. So I don't think it's going to be a cakewalk here for Trevor Bauer, but it's a pitcher-friendly park in Petco. Team total below four against him. Slight underdog here, 8K prop, though. I think I think he should be just fine. I mean, if you're looking for raw points, Trevor Bauer, I think, is your guy tonight on that later slate. If you're playing the early slate, the ace of the slate would be Brandon Woodruff, 10300 bucks. That's an okay matchup versus Arizona. I don't love pitching in Arizona, but only 3.1 implied team total against him. Very heavy favorite, and his numbers have been very, very good this season. I would say better than Trevor Bowers overall. Uh, 97 on his fastball almost, ERA below 2, except at 2.8, 3.04 Sierra, 30.7% K rate. Not really walking many guys. Gives up virtually zero power, so I think this matchup versus Arizona should be fine for him. Like The only concerning bat here is probably Catal Marte. Yeah, there's some other guys in there that are okay are decent but nothing you really run from the hills from with using Brandon Woodruff here so if you're in the late slate tonight definitely think he's a good raw points play Robbie Ray 9200 bucks he doesn't really walk many guys and he's not giving up a ton of power this season it's I don't know it's kind of weird I mean it's kind of like the anti Robbie Ray what we know in the past but he's been really good this year and it's a good matchup here versus the Miami Marlins they've been a little bit worse versus righties this season compared to lefties they do have some guys that have some decent pop Versus left-handed pitching this season, but I think the strikeout upside is good enough for me for Robbie Ray here. 3.7 implied team total against him. Pitcher from the park in Miami. And looking at his overall numbers this season, pretty impressive for Robbie Ray. 3.5 ERA, but actually pitching better than that considering his XFIP and Sierra are in the very low threes. 31.5% K rate, only a 6.5% walk rate. But 200 ISO and a 34.7% hard contact rate and over two homers per nine. So... That's a little bit concerning here, but the Marlins lineup doesn't overly concern me here. About a 28% K rate to lefties this season. 139 ISO, 87 WRC+, 289 WOBA. I think Robbie Ray should be just fine. Like the strikeout upside from him here. And like I said, not the hardest spender for pitching on the late slate tonight. And then a couple of early slate guys here. If you're looking for a little bit cheaper options, we have Shea Otani and Herman Marquez. 
Shohei Otani, pretty much anytime he pitches, I will have him on here. He has yet to have like a bad game this year. I know the walks can be a bit of an issue. Walk rate at 13% still, but about a 33% K rate. Give me a batting average below or below 200, only a 115 ISO, 50% ground ball rate, only a 31% hard contact rate, around a homer per nine. Four and five team total against him. The Giants do have some decent bats, and they had a good start yesterday, but Otani is just so good. I mean, it's hard not to recommend him any single time he takes the mound. He's just one of the most exciting players in baseball. Pretty much the top MVP candidate right there with Vlad, although the Vlad doesn't pitch. That's why I'm giving the edge to Otani there, but only 8600 bucks for a pitcher that's got 20-plus point upside any single time he's on the mound. And if you're looking for a dirt cheap option, I could see him being pretty popular, but it's Herman Marquez, 6500 bucks. I'm not sure why DraftKings hates him. They always price him super low. I'm not sure if it's just because he's a Rockies pitcher and he could always be pitching in cores. But I know DraftKings doesn't, knows that he's not in cores today. So, I don't know, weird pricing for him. Super soft matchup versus Seattle. If you're looking for a cheap pitcher, Marquez makes all these sense in the world. The guy's just, he's not bad. He's not as bad as his price tag indicates. ERA at 4.2 this season, but XFIP below 4. Sierra is not that pretty, but 23% K rate. Will walk some guys, but doesn't give up much power. Only a 117 ISO, 55% ground ball rate, less than a homer per nine. I mean, the ratios look good. And the matchup versus Seattle so far this season, striking out over a 26% clip to righty. So if you're looking for a dirt cheap pitcher, like Marquez quite a bit, does grade out very, very well as a point per dollar play. But that's going to be pretty much it for the pitching. So let's move right over to the bats. And as always, we'll start with the catcher position. I know it's not an exciting position to start with, but we'll just get it out of the way here. So mainly, I just try to pick catchers on offenses I like. And Gary Sanchez, 5200 bucks. Not in love with using the Yankees. I'm not one to really use the Yankees too much, but Gary Sanchez has actually been playing some decent baseball recently. And his ISO is above 220 now this season. Still has a terrible batting average. The ISO is almost higher than his batting average, but team total above five here. Jenny Duffy's not a terrible pitcher, but the Yankees have a lot of right-handed bats to use against him. And I think he might struggle a little bit in Yankee Stadium here. So I like some of the power righties for the Yankees today. Sean Murphy, $4,000. I believe he had 18 points yesterday. The Oakland A's had like two touchdowns yesterday versus, uh, it was an O'Hearn. And then they brought someone else in. And then Jordan Lowes ended up getting into the game. It's like a long relief guy. And they ended up just smashing the Rangers. And I would not be surprised if that happens once again. Fulte is not a terrible, terrible pitcher. But he's a guy that will give up plenty of hard contact and plenty of power. And he doesn't really strike out too many guys. So these guys should be getting some uh, pitches to hit. Looking at Fulte's numbers this season, over a 5.5 ERA, 5 XFIP, 15% K rate, 291 batting average given up, 266 ISO, close to a 400 Woba. And the hard contact rates at nearly 40% this season with over two homers per nine. So these Oakland days grade out very well for me. Sean Murphy, not a big batting average guy, but does have over a 200 ISO this season. And then Martin Maldonado, 2600 bucks. Astros kind of disappointed yesterday, but they're still in Cannon Yards, one of the best places to hit. Thomas Eshelman, or Tom Eshelman, whatever you prefer, I think DraftKings has him as Thomas. He is not a very good pitcher, and one of the best places to hit. Team total close to six today. You get the guarantee nothing at bats because you're on the road. Love all of the Astros. Once again, I'll be willing to go right back to the well. They crushed the first night. Kind of disappointed the second night. Still had some guys that had some decent games hitting-wise, but they didn't really crush. I think they only scored three runs yesterday. But Martin Monado, if you're just looking for a dirt-cheap option on pretty much the best offense tonight, he makes sense if you're just trying to save some money. Then drop down on first base, we have Matt Olson, who has been murdering right-handed pitching this season. He's been playing very, very well. So if you got the money for him, if you're stacking the A, it's kind of hard to leave him off your lineup. Over a 300 ISO this season, 409 Woba, batting close to 300. And if we look specifically at a righties, I mean, just some really good numbers. Close to 1,000 OPS, only a 12% K rate. Actually, he's walking as much as he's striking out, and those numbers are both pretty decent. I mean, 12% K rate is nothing to really... Uh, worry about, especially when you're a big power guy, because usually when a guy has a lot of power, that comes with a lot of strikeouts, but not with Matt Olson this season. Also a 40.7% hard contact rate, two righties with over a 300 batting average, so love Olson. I mean, if you got the money for him, he might just be the best overall play today, but I wouldn't say he's an absolute must play because of the price tag. Also, Yuli Gurriel, 4800 bucks. Like all the Astros here, he's a guy that hits for a pretty high batting average with a decent amount of power. I know it never feels great paying nearly $5,000 for Gariel, but the guy has been playing very good baseball this season. And Luke Voigt, $4,000. I think he was $2,700 yesterday, went deep on a homer. Gets, another, gets a lefty on the mound here. Still cheapish, but the price definitely came up a little bit, $1,300 to be exact. And the numbers aren't exactly great this year, but it's a smaller sample size. He's been injured. 4000 bucks if you are stacking Yankees, don't hate him. And he's the only other Yankee we're going to talk about, but you can still play Aaron Judge on close stand, Torres, or Shala, DJ LeMahieu, if you so choose to do so. That's not some of my favorite plays today. 
And then going down to second base, we have Jose Altuve, 5700 bucks. Getting very pricey here, but definitely one of the best options today if you have the money for him. Just super expensive. And, uh, like, when I could rather get a cheaper second base and maybe spend it for a Matt Olsen today, I think I'd rather do that than spending top dollar for Jose Altuve. But if you are stacking Astros, obviously he's a great option. I think he's got 16 homers on the season, 230 ISO, 300 batting average. Tony Kemp, 3300 bucks, should be leading off here for the Oakland A's with a righty on the mound. And if that's the case, I could see him being very chalky in cash games. I mean, team total close to five. He's $2,400 cheaper than Altuve, and he's batting 275 this season. Doesn't quite have the power, but still a great option nonetheless. Jeff McNeil, $3,000, should be leading off here versus the righty on the mound. Kyle Wright, not really in love with the uh, New York Mets today. I mean, I'm never really a big fan of the Mets unless they're in a really, really good matchup. I don't think Kyle Wright's the worst pitcher out there in the world. No teams hold out yet for either side of this game because I think they're, I know Tyler McGill is pitching for the Mets. I'm not sure if it's 100% confirmed, so maybe they're waiting on that, but that's definitely the rumor. So once that comes out, I don't know. I feel like the Mets probably be like in the fours. Braves might be in the fives going up against a new pitcher, so we'll have to wait and see on that. But McNeil, you can play him just because he's cheap and should be leading off. You could throw in Ozzy Albies here too, or in Freddie Freeman at first base if you are stacking the Braves today. Third base, Matt Chapman, 4600 bucks. He went deep in the first inning yesterday versus a lefty. Got to see a righty today, but, you know, Fulty, you can play pretty much anybody versus him, and Chapman's got a little bit of power there. Austin Riley, 300 bucks. So the first Brave we actually have listed here, but like I said, you can pretty much use the entire lineup here if you're just a fan of picking on new pitchers. I believe Tyler McGill is, like, their 21st best prospect for the Mets, so it's not like it's first, second, or third, fourth. So I think we can pick on him a little bit here. Not sure what the team total is going to be. It might be around five. I'm just trying to guess there. I'm not really sure where they're going to end up being. I'll be interested to see that. If it's like in the upper fives, I'm going to up my interest on the, like the Braves here. But I'll we'll have to see. I still like the Astros the best, but the Braves can definitely be a good stack today. And Austin Riley, big fly ball guy, 286 batting average this season with over a 200 ISO. Then Toro, 2400 bucks, probably going to end up being popular again. He was like 55% in cash yesterday, I think. And then he was like 60 the day before that, unless I'm getting my numbers mixed up. But you can play Toro, just a dirt cheap Astro. Then dropping out a shortstop, we have Carlos Correa, 5000 bucks was not in the lineup yesterday, but assuming he's back in today, it's a little bit lower in the order. I'd like to see him hit a little bit higher, but batting close to 300 this season, 34 Woba, over a 200 ice. So if you got the money for him, great. But who are we kidding? We know who we're playing at shortstop today. It's Water Fr It's Wander Franco at $2,000. But before we get to him, Dansby Swanson, if you're stacking the Braves, you can play him, but, I mean, that's for real. At $2,000, he's absolutely free. He went deep last night in his first major league hit, and then his first plate appearance, not a bad, but plate appearance, he was 0-2, worked the count, ended up walking versus Erod. So I think this guy's just going to be an absolute stud. I don't think it's a hot take or anything. I feel like everyone has that same mindset that Wander Franco is going to be an absolute monster, and, well, he had a really great <laughs> debut yesterday, and, I don't know what DraftKings is doing. He's 2000 bucks for some reason. He's going to be a 5 plus K player soon probably. So play him while you can while he's free. And this is one of those reasons why I said where you can double spend it for pitching today. Because if you just want to play Toro at third base. Because third base kind of sucks today. So if you just want to play Toro, then at shortstop, you play Franco, 2000 bucks, And that really opens up your lineup quite a bit. Which is what everyone did yesterday. I mean, everyone went that same exact route. And both these guys are pretty much the same price tags. Once again, so... Wander, I mean, I don't know how you fade him. Yeah, Garrett Richards on the mound, maybe not the worst pitcher out there, but who cares? Just play Wander tonight. I assume he's going to be like, if you're playing cash games, I bet you're probably like 85% owned, to be honest. I think Jordan was 80 yesterday. Franco was, um, I think, 75. I could see that push a 90 today. And then dropping out of the outfield, we have Jordan Alvarez, 5000 bucks. Left and ready power here versus Eshelman. Great park to hit. Love the Astros today. Team total close to six. Don't think I have to explain this one too much. Uh, Mark Cannon, Ramon Lariano, both guys had really good games yesterday. Like them once again, if you are stacking up the Oakland days, both guys have over a 200 ISO this season, and Lariano's got some speed upside. Michael Brantley, 4100 bucks, one of my favorite plays on the slate once again. DraftKings raised his price a little bit. He's no longer in the 3K range, but it wasn't he like 3300 a couple like a week ago. 3200 kind of insane how low he gets priced for some reason. But all the guy does is hit. Batting average close to 350 this season. Not a huge power guy, but he can definitely get doubles. I think he's only got four homers in the season, but love Michael Brantley once again. And the, all the guy does is hit for contact. I mean, the guy doesn't rarely strikes out. Always going to put the ball in play. And he's like the perfect cash game play, and he's not overly expensive. So love Michael Brantley once again. Abraham Almonte, 3400 bucks. 
if you are wanting to stack the Braves today, he should be batting clean up. He's a switch hitter, so he's always got the platoon advantage by batting 300 this season with a 432 Woba and a 250 ISO. Then Chas McCormick, 3300 bucks. We saw Robel Garcia ending up batting second yesterday, and that bumped McCormick down to, I think, sixth or seventh, I believe. Because sixth was Toro, so I think McCormick went to seventh. Assuming he's back to second today, definitely like him once again. He's actually had some decent power this season. Low batting average, but close to a 300 ISO, so I think you could definitely look his way. But with that being said, guys, I think that'll be it for the video. So I hope it was helpful, and if it was, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Just a free way to show your support for all the content that I produce pretty much every single day for you guys. And follow me over on social media if you want. Check out the Patreon if you want some extra content. But yeah, that'll pretty much be it. We have a doubleheader for NASCAR this weekend. Two Pocono races, so I'll be having two videos, two live streams. It's going to be fun. So if you have never played NASCAR DFS before, I think it's a really fun sport. You should check it out. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll stop rambling. Hope you guys enjoy your Wednesday, and I'll see you guys in the next video.